I very much doubt Toyota realised what cult vehicle they were creating when the Mark IV Supra was born. Fast forward to today, and massively helped by the Fast and Furious, it's an icon. And this business in South Wales has been thriving on these for 20 odd years. But now there's another car on the block, another Toyota, another cult vehicle, half the cylinders, but no less power. And that's what I'm going to focus on today. And of course, I'm talking about the homologation rally special, the GR Yaris, still on sale now, more popular than ever before. 257 horsepower out of a three cylinder turbo, but not this one. Oh no, this car has pretty much double the output of the standard GR, still street legal, but very, very different beneath the skin. And this is what I'm gonna drive in this episode. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. So Paul, I remember hearing about Whiff Bits years ago when I used to work on Max Power magazine, because you were tuning Supras back then. We're talking over 20 years ago, I reckon. 23 years, yeah. 23 years ago, which is why you've got a cluster of Mark IVs <laughs> all around here. So that has been your focus for decades. It's been the core of the business, yeah, for yeah, 23 years now. So we've done every, everything we, you can think with them from modifying standard cars, just road cars, to track cars, drag cars, drift cars. Wow. And you've seen the value of them tenfold increase over the last decade. Yep. But this is the new era. You know, this is the new sort of like hot Toyota of the moment. And this specific car is like, your, it's a customer car, it's not your car, right? Customer's car, yeah. They've obviously just gone, <laughs> do, do something crazy with it, but still make it road legal. Because it's quite subtle, actually. I mean, well, they're a the bold... outside, yeah. There's, apart from the wheels and, and the, the carbon bonnet, bonnet, it's it's yeah, pretty it's, much it's standard, pretty it? much standard, really. Yeah. Looking, <clears throat> I'm not going to call um, it a sleeper because they're not sleepers because they are quite bulbous. But so tell us the sort of headline figures of this car then. What what we're we dealing with in terms of mods and so 451 horsepower, uh, wheel horsepower, sorry which is about 550 brake horsepower at the flywheel. Yeah. So double the horsepower. Double the horsepower, yeah. Wow. Um, so that's on pump fuel. Okay. I was well, just 99 run, Tesco. Super. Super unleaded. Okay. Uh, so it's got more power to come. So when we run the ethanol fuel, we're expecting 500 wheel horsepower. Really? Maybe more than that. I'm not, um, well, until we do it, we're not sure how much it's going to make, but. Wow. Uh, so that'd be 600 plus horsepower at the flywheel. It's still a 1.6? Still a 1.6. Okay, three. so it hasn't been stroked or anything like that? No, so it's just forged pistons and rods. Wow. Um, ported head, that's all we've done. Yeah. With, the, with the valve springs and the cams as well, Kelford cams. Yeah. So that's it on the engine, it's the, yeah, the actual And then engine. turbo's obviously different, it's got to be. Uh, yeah, it's got a lamb speed turbo kit, which is, runs a Garrett G25 660 turbo. Yeah. Um, so that's the turbo kit, yeah, and you've got a billet intake manifold as well. Let's have a look, I want to have a look. Let's have a look. Because you never know with these things, you never know how wild they're going to look aesthetically. Bloody hell, that actually looks really factory and quite, yeah. quite kind of subtle. Apart from the carbon engine cover and uh, Eventuri carbon intake. That's a piece of work, isn't it? So, okay, go on then. So um, be, beyond the, um, the carbon uh, cover. So, yeah. It's, Bloody hell, it still looks, it's, it's getting... It's still, it's not a pretty thing, is it? It's, it's, <laughs> it's subtle. I mean, modern engines are just smothered in, in sensors and... Pipes and... Pipes. Yeah. But I can see there's the billet going on here. So that's the billet intake. So that's a billet intake manifold. Yeah. Um, so it's got a bigger, Throttle body under there as well. Yeah. I can uh, see some billet down here. All the intercooled pipe work was all custom made here to 
a much, much bigger site. I think it's 76 mil. A I lot can't bigger. believe the power you're getting out of it, and it's still a 1.6. Still 1 .6, three, three cylinder, yeah. <laughs> you know, these cars you've been breathing for the last 20 odd years are double the pistons. You know, and I remember a 500 horsepower Supra back in the early 2000s was a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you've it's just an amazing got... engine. Yeah. It is. Wow. I mean, it, just to give it context, the block is basically less than two of my hand spans. It's, it's from there to there. That's the size of the engine. It's such, a, it's such a compact block. So we've got down there, billet um, sequential gearbox. I've seen the big carbon fiber wand in there. Yep. So you, you've got a six speed. Seven speed. Seven speed. Seven speed sequential box, yeah. Nice. Okay. Obviously the, the inlet manifold, the different turbo, the different intercooling, the different air box. Yep. Bit of bracing, I see, custom uh, brace. Also Cyvex ECU, that's there. It fits in the standard position, so that's where the standard ECU fits. Right. It all clips so that's in. pretty critical for, for, for mapping it. Yep. And I know Paul has promised a little run on the dyno because behind that door is a, is a rolling road. We're gonna put it on the dyno before I take it out on the road. actually stop the press because the car makes even more power than when we went and drove it because after a couple more changes Paul Whiffin put it back on the dyno and got 506 wheel horsepower and that equates to over 600 at the crank. You can see the dyno readout on screen now and I'll put a link in the description for how we converted it to crank horsepower. Astonishing. So are you getting customers bringing you brand new cars and just going tear it up and change it? Uh, yeah, we not to this extent yet. This is the first one. This this yeah gone this far, but we've, we're doing a lot of cars with hybrid turbos, the Cyvex yeah. ECU, yeah, uh, Kelford cams, valve springs, uh, and they're, they're putting out sort of four twenty four fifty. Because there's, there's there's a GR right next to your head on yep. the, on the left. That, that one will be running about four twenty horsepower. So that's just bolt on mods basically, exhaust hybrids. Hybrid turbo, um, valve springs, cams, and wow. Cyvex. Wow. ECU. Wow. First. Second. Hello. Third. Such an urgency to it. Such an amazing urgency. This thing on a rally stage or a tarmac rally stage should just be absolutely amazing. Wow, I would love to try that. There's a pattern developing here on the late brake show, isn't there? Really powerful car, sequential gearbox, cold, treacherous, wet conditions and fog. Yeah, remember Vader, the Larry Chevet? Bloody hell. Got to tickle it. You can feel the, the, the reverberation through this carbon shifter wand. Naturally, being four wheel drive, the GR Yaris is good in slippery conditions because you've got all four wheels getting power. It's just that right now they're getting more power than you'd ordinarily expect. And I'm not going to be able to use all of this power today. 500 horsepower nearest damage to the wheels. And I am using the clutch a lot of the time, although you don't have to on the sequential, but unless you're going balls out flat throttle, it's better to use the clutch. This is an ATS um, carbon clutch from Japan. It's really good. Clutch pedals actually feels OEM. 
of standing water so I am not going to be able to push it as hard as I would like because I have got a beanie hat on for a reason, not because I'm a rally fan, but because it's pissing cold today. Minus two, actually. This is a seven speed Kutek billet box, and it's really, really good. And as you can hear, it's not that vocal, not compared to a lot of, not compared to a lot of sequentials I've experienced. Man, this is effortless. Bizarrely, at 5,000 RPM, it doesn't sound like it's revving that high. But then again, the Aris is not a massively high revving engine, really. 7,500 red line. Got a plethora of readouts from this touchscreen that Paul showed me. There's a lot of stock Yaris going on in here. With uh, And remember, the stock um, center diff is still in it, and the stock rear diff, albeit the rear diff has got an, oil, an auxiliary oil cooler and oil pump and it's doubled the oil capacity because apparently it gets too hot under certain driving conditions and that's improved it no end. So you look, pulling away with the clutch, actually really quite good. The clutch is great. Whoa, 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 whoa. Standing water, bad news. Incredible thrust from such a small displacement. I'm using the clutch. Wow. I'm probably only using 400 of the 500 or three and a half hundred of the possible horsepower available because of these conditions. And because I'm not on private property, but wow. It's really, really good. Quite an elastic engine, actually. This is a special car in itself, the GI Yaris. And if you haven't seen uh, the review that I did of the car when it first launched, I'll put a link above my head now. I didn't think it would be possible to kind of crack this recipe in the same way that when the R35 Nissan GTR came out, they basically said it's untunable leave it as it is, the engine will not be tuned, and then suddenly all the tuners got a hold of it and went, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be the decider of that. And of course it spawned all of the Godzillas again. But this, right, are you ready? Wow. You hear that spit back there? I mean, that's in the wet, and I wasn't getting a great deal of wheel slip, to be honest, which is incredible on these Nankang track day tyres. These Buddy Club P1 limited edition seats, they're so comfortable. And it addresses the problem that a few people have had where the Yaris driving position's a little high, and I'm tall, so I do like to sit and nestle low. All right, weather's getting worse, sleet, on the way, freezing fog, it's minus two. It's really not ideal, suboptimal conditions for a heavily modified vehicle, but at least it's all-wheel drive. That's what I will say. I think the GR Yaris has instantly become a, a cult thing. It's, it's rekindled the sort of like out, original Audi Quattro fire and the, or the Celica GT4, you know, it's, it's got that, got that wow factor and it's it's a homologation car it's going to go down in history as one of the few true homologation cars in this this time there's your there's your sequential shifter yep with a huge digital uh readout of what gear in what yep. we got going on here uh that's a can checked display so that basically displays anything the ecu sees yeah so it's all done on can bus yep. communicating with each other and uh, so anything that you see, you see that can be displayed on there, any, anything you want. Oil yeah. temp, oil pressure, coolant temp, boost. It can show limp mode as well. If it goes into limp mode, it can yeah. display what's been, why it's gone into limp mode. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you've got multiple displays as well. 
you can flick across to have all different ah, okay, okay. designs and you can do it's got performance meter so you can you can read your 0 to 60 and oh nice that's handy all that. never know when you might need it there's lots of different designs you can have and it's all configurable as well and then you i mean everything else i mean you've got you've got these you've got the kind of buddy club probably very expensive Japanese import race seats mm -hmm. sitting on the plinths. And then behind you, you've got a bit of a spider's web of cage yep. going on. Yep. So you've taken some weight out with the, with the, with the buckets, probably added a bit. Yeah, it's probably equalised equalize itself yeah, out. But it might be rigidity, might help rigidity. I mean, I know it's a pretty rigid shell yeah, yeah. on this car anyway. Yeah, it's definitely going to help. Definitely. So. You've also got a, a knob here for um, the forward drive controller. Ah. So Cybex is the same company does the ECU, they do a full drive control and you can actually adjust. What, how much rear bias or front rear? Front rear bias, yeah. It's What's all, the percentage? What, what can you get? You can't um, well, you can have the factory set up yeah. or you can configure it all yourself. You can go in on the laptop, connect it up to that. You can do what you like, basically. Go 90-10 or something like that. If you want, <laughs> you can have the flick of that switch puts it into burnout mode as well. So you can have a uh, two-wheel drive mode only. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. Okay, is that for like pre-launch control if you're doing yeah, yeah. drag racing or yeah, yeah. hot starts? Yeah. Okay. I'm wondering how much the owner has spent on this. <laughs> is, this an, is this information that we are keeping close to our he's, chest? He's saying of estimated 100 grand. Wow. Estimated. Wow. On top of the cost of the on car. On top of the cost of the car. Yeah. Which is what, 36, 30? Something like that, yeah. yeah. 35, 36, yeah. Goodness. What a weapon though. Okay, concentrate Johnny, concentrate. This thing's fantastic. Really, really much better than I was expecting. I, a lot of big power cars are all or nothing, on off switch, horrible, horrible. The controls feel disgusting. They just want to hurt you. This, is, this isn't that. I don't think this is that. I can't explore it in its to its maximum potential because it's probably A, better than me, and B, these conditions do not lend themselves to tipping a car in hard into a corner with 500 horses, but, wow. Just so sure-footed and until you go until you go a little bit more committed on the throttle and then you've got to be aware. You've got to be very aware. Proper rush of blood to the head stuff. <laughs> it's a dirty little thing this is. Naughty little piece of work. Way more impressive than I thought I would be. I really am. I've had to put a light on in the cabin because it's all dark Alcantara and plastic and the weather, there's no, been no sun today so it's dark, dark, dark. It's got this weird hum, almost sounds like an aeroplane engine at about 4,000. I've always liked a three-cylinder but the GR Yaris in standard form is quite a quiet engine I suppose, not helped by the turbo. This is really singing but it's very smooth. They're not lumpy engines, three pots. They really thrum along. You can short shift, no problem. That's the beauty of modern mapping and direct injection. That ability to control, calibrate a really highly strung engine for all different conditions. KW suspension, Nine and a half J raised forged wheels. Uh, I think the standards are eight J, and the standards in circuit pack form, which this car was, are also forged. Makes a difference. Got that wider footprint. There's a sort of composed. As I go through this village, there's Tin Turn Abbey, amazing, beautiful old ruin. There's an amazing uh, organised chaos to, to the, <laughs> the state of tune of this particular car. And that gearbox and that clutch help immensely to make it drivable. You know, I'm driving through a village and I know that, although it, yeah, you can hear it sort of juddering a little bit, 
It pulls from low down. It's not grumbling and mumbling. Thank you also to Andrew, the owner, for letting me drive it regardless of the weather. I very much hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, why not subscribe? You could become a, a Patreon and support the channel that way. Uh, I'll put a link for that in the description again. You get early access to videos like this for a couple of quid a month. Maybe you want to visit our merch shop. We sell merch. It's really good. Although I would say that. Again, a link in the description. Thank you and goodbye.